Hey y'all, welcome. It's Julia and you're tuning into Julia Marie Yoga. Practice everywhere flows. So that probably means that you are getting this in your inbox and it's a Tuesday morning. I'm really excited because today I'm bringing you into my house and we're going to do um, flow from my living room. Um, today's flow is the anti-airplane flow. Um, at least it's what I do when I have been traveling in on an airplane seat for too long. But really, this is a cure for sitting at your desk too long, um, sitting in general too long. Um, and in the yoga world, we think of opposites as our medicine. Um, but we don't want to push them too extreme. If you've been sitting for eight hours, the medicine isn't stand up for eight hours. It's kind of ease your body into something different. And that's what we're going to be doing. So um, we'll be stretching the hamstrings, opening up our hip flexors, getting some space across the chest. And I bet you by the end of this flow, you're going to forget all about uh, that chair you were sitting in. And for me, ugh, lots and lots and lots of hours on an airplane going to and from awesome yoga training. So grab your mat, get your water, and we'll get started. So here we are in my living room, um, and when I tell you you can practice everywhere and you don't need a lot of space, I really, really practice what I preach. I love getting into the studio and I love going to um, an hour-long class or a 90-minute class, and that's fantastic. But sometimes I just need to roll out my mat or even just use this rug. Sometimes I don't even put a mat on top of it and get going. Um, to be honest, most of the time I have my two dogs scurrying around, but for you guys, um, you know, I give them a treat and ask them to. I'd go to their room for a little while, so it's just us. Um, but maybe you have kiddos with you, maybe you have dogs with you, kitties with you, maybe you're doing this in your office and you have colleagues coming by. You know what? You just hang up the like gone fishing sign, gone yogaing for <laughs> the next 30 minutes or so, and this time is just for you. All right, so let's come on down to the seat. We're going to ease ourselves out of the seat, but let's start in the seat. Okay. Come down to the floor where you're at. Tuck one heel in, another heel to rest in front of it. But if you still have this knee that's coming up, like I do, hip flexors are feeling a little tight, knees are creeping up, you can grab a pillow and sit on it. All right, so now that you have grounded sit bones, you can feel ah that those knees can just sort of widen out. And if you are like me, and maybe this really is an anti-airplane flow for you, and you are in that third seat, right? Your knees were probably like this the whole time. <sighs> feels really good to just take up some space. Let the backs of your hands rest softly in your lap. Let your spine lift tall like a little telescope. Crown can float. Let the eyes soften. Mouth softens. Take a deep breath in, in through the nose, as if you're filling up all the way down this straw into the basin of the pelvis. The low belly can be soft. Good. And as you exhale, you can feel pelvic floor lifts, belly draws in just a little bit, and the air travels back up and out, either mouth or nose. It might still be mouth right now, just to get that sighing. <sighs> yeah. So again, it's inhale through the nose, down that straw or tube, all the way down into the basin of the pelvis. Belly can be soft on the inhale, so you can take in more air. Good. And the exhale, it travels back out. Again, inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Open the eyes. And then inhale, sweep your arms up. So you're going to the A seat. Um, maybe you're sitting in B seat and then C seat. You're just going right into it, their space that they were taking up, right? <laughs> Hands clasped. And then right back into your center seat. And then inhale, spread it out. You're taking up tons of space. You were in a loud space for four hours and now it's yours. Exhale, hands to heart. Good, let's go again. Get big, get wide as you sweep, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Good, inhale, reach up. This time, interlace the fingers. Flip your palms up, press. So from your sit bones down, sides your waist, all the way up through your palms. You're long, you're lifted, breathe in. Then exhale, take the hands behind the back. Let the elbows be soft as you clasp the fingers. And I'll turn to the side so you can see this. So let the elbows be soft first, and then loop the shoulder heads back. 
then press the knuckles down. Yeah, and then allow the chest to lift. As you press the knuckles down, the chest can lift. Move the heart up, and then the neck follows the extension of the spine. Maybe the gaze tips up. Breathe high across your chest. So you're stretching your chest muscles from the inside out. Hmm. Again, like that. Big. Hmm. Last time. Release the palms, reach up. You can move your bolster or pillow out of the way. We're going to come to tabletop. Good. And tabletop, take an inhale for cow pose. Tailbone starts the motion, so it goes up. The belly can soften down. Let the heart loop through. It can be sweet to stay a little soft in the elbows until you come to the end range of your motion. Good, and then as you transition, again, soft elbows, tailbone comes under, belly button up, and press the arms straight as you ground the palms, the fingertips down into the earth, dome the back of the heart up to the ceiling, gaze can come back to the navel. Good, inhale, cow pose, tailbone, belly, cascade the heart, throat, third eye. Good, exhale, tailbone, belly, back of the heart, press into the palms, gaze comes to navel. Inhale, cow. Exhale into your cat. Good. Now lengthen in neutral. Find it firm through your shin and into your left hand. Sweep the right arm up and just take a few big circles. Big circles. Make some space. Should feel really good after being cramped. Good. One more time. Inhale, reach up. Then thread the needle all the way through, shoulder down, cheek down, left arm goes long. Hmm. And now you're going to step your left foot out. You're on your right shoulder, left leg is out to the side. You might even notice that if you allow the chest to really ground down into the shoulder, you get that gentle drag or gentle traction that's going to stretch out the back side of the shoulder and all the way into the deltoid a little bit more. Definitely feel in the rotator cuff as well. But be sweet if it's edgy right now. Don't go hard on it. Good. Leave the legs as they are. Just unwind the torso. So you're going to be in this extended left leg, tabletop and the rest of the body, and then crawl it forward. Almost like you're going into puppy pose or a down dog shape. And then push into your hands push into the perimeter of your palms and sort of hollow the armpits back until you feel that stretch deep in the armpits. The heart can melt through, drop the head. Good. And then walk the hands back in, step the knee back in, take a cat pose. Inhale for the cow pose. Yeah, one more cat pose. Good. Now lengthen neutral spine, ground into the shins, the right hand this time, the left arm goes up, and then just start with those big sweeping circles, just opening up. Should feel really good. Make some space. You can go in both directions if you'd like. Good. One more time. Big up. And then thread, thread, thread. Shoulder down, cheek down, ear down. I'm going to scooch now my right foot underneath my couch, <laughs> so your right foot's going to go out to the side, maybe it's underneath your desk, right arm can go extended to the top edge of the mat, or you can reach um, to fingertips and hollow the armpit if that feels good, and maybe there's a connection of the left fingertips to the right big toe, maybe there's not, um, it doesn't really matter, no need to effort to something that's not available today, don't worry about it. Hmm. Good, leg stays as it is, unwind the torso. So the torso and the arms are in that tabletop. And then again, crawl it forward, almost like you're doing a puppy pose variation, pushing into the palms, hollowing the armpits back, letting the heart, the third eye melt through. Good, and then walk the hands up, bring the right knee in, tuck the toes, press back, bent knee downward facing dog, so you're going to push into the hands. You're still keeping sort of a chair-like experience in the legs. Turn the toes to the left, reach the left arm up to the ceiling. Good. Take a full breath in. Exhale, hand down, keep the legs nice and bent, that chair-like shape. Turn the toes to the right, 
reach the right arm up. Good, exhale the hand down, chair in the legs, move the chest back to the thighs, and then slow, peel, yes, legs long. Adho Svanasana, downward facing dog. You're gonna press root into the hands, feel the shoulder blades find a secure space on the upper back so that the neck can be nice and free. You don't have to draw them down. Instead, think about the pinky line kind of pushing forward, and then those biceps wrap in towards the ears. And you get this really nice, long, strong, stable shoulder, uh, but also freedom in the neck. Good. And now we'll let the sit bones lift up, heels lift up. Then soften the knees, push forward. Plank pose, and then lower all the way down to the belly. Strengthen the legs. Inhale, heart moves forward, cobra pose. Slide the shoulder blades down, now secure. So a little bit different before we kind of had them wide and out in our downward facing dog because our arms were above our heads. And then when our arms are down in our sides, we can really draw the shoulder blades in and down the back, which is just a little bit of a different action. Yeah, take another breath in. Good, exhale, forehead down. Now tuck the toes, push straight up, and then downward facing dog. Again, you're gonna feel a little mobility for the shoulder blades and kind of wrap out to the outer armpits. Strength through the arms, but then a nice long neck. Good, then set the feet together. Sweep the right foot up. Step it through to a lunge. Good, and you're gonna pause here in your lunge. Cascade the heart forward from a strong back leg. So this left leg's really strong. Heart moves forward. Belly zips in off the inner thigh, but not to uh, crunch you, to encourage wave through the heart. Yeah, and then the left hand goes down. Circle the right arm up, big sweep. Good, then touch the right hand down. Release the left knee down, untuck the toes. You're gonna come on up to Anjaneyasana. So we're gonna root down into that back shin. Pay attention to the back leg because this is our anti-airplane flow, right? I wanna feel that hip flexor open. So allow the tailbone to get heavy and then like a zipper from the upper middle thigh to right on up to the belly, up into the heart, and then the arms can reach. Good, so you're just focusing on that hip flexor, and if you want, you can even squeeze the left glute a little bit, so it's, yes, and then I'll release it. Heart moves up, fingers move up. Imagine the pinky wings could get a little higher than the thumb wings, so you feel that, ha, huh, big, almost like you could hold a big bundle of cotton candy between your hands. Good, full inhale, tuck the back toes on your exhale, drop the hands down and step. Step the left foot wide. So the right foot and the left foot are gonna have some space between them, soften the knees. So if you've been sitting in a, in a chair for an extended period of time, just cranking on um, the hamstrings is not gonna be super happy for you. You might hear my dogs, they agree with me right now, they're barking. Um, just let your head dangle. And then as the hamstrings find some space, you might notice that uh, things can get going, get moving, yeah. Drop the head, let it dangle, ears go low to the floor. Good, and now make sure the toes are, are forward. Bend into the right knee, ground the right hand. Good, and then take the left thumb and just sort of, and not roll out, lift up. So you just feel, oh, that crease got sharper. Kind of lifting up. And then the left arm can go high. Drop the head. Good, and then touch it down. And then the same on the left side. So the left knee is going to bend a lot. You're going to take the right thumb up to the hip crease. Move the hip crease up. Move it up. And then turn the chest open, reach. Drop the head. Good, touch down. Hands to shins, you'll halfway lift, heart moves forward off the thighs. Exhale, fold it, fold it, fold it. Big stand, reach all the way up wide, like you're just holding a globe over, over your head, firm in the feet, tailbone down, belly up, heart up. It's not a tuck of the tail, it's an anchor in the lower energy center so that there's a lift, there's a lightness in the upper body. Good, big inhale. And then the arms come behind you, soften the knees. As you interlace the fingers, drive them down, heart lifts up. Bend the knees and fold belly between the thighs and then rinse the knuckles over the skull. Drop the head. 
press the knuckles away from your upper back. And if this feels edgy today, you can put a washcloth or a towel between the hands or a belt between the hands. Good. Drop the fingertips down. On your inhale, lunge your right foot back. So we're going to move to the other side. Run, lunge the right foot back. The belly draws in so the heart can wave forward. And then release the right knee down. Press the shin down. And feel that zipper up through the heart. Arms follow. So we're finding anchor down, rising up. If you feel some collapse in the lumbar, draw that front pelvis up. Just a little bit front lumbar up, so even a little bit higher in and up. And then the heart moves, so we're not crunching in. We're continuing it up. And then fingertips reach. Good. Now if you want, you can squeeze that right glute a little bit. Big inhale. Good. Touch down. Step back. Downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. The feet come together. The inhale, sweep the left leg high. And your exhale, step through, lunge. Right hand goes down. Circle the left arm up. Good. Touch down, right knee down. Inhale, lift up the Anjane Asana. Root into front heel, back shin, lift. Exhale, fold, step. Hands to shin bones, halfway lift. Fold and bow, heel toe the feet together, this time chair pose, anchor down into the heels, lift the heart up, reach the arms up, so you can feel the tailbone as if you dropped an anchor straight down, front lumbar comes up, heart lifts up, full breath, good, and now turn to the right, hook the left elbow to the outer right thigh, lengthen the sides of the waist on inhale, turn from the belly, the heart, Shoulder blades follow the back line. Gaze can come up. Good. And then unwind it all the way. Stand up. Reach up. Exhale. Sit. Turn. Rotate. Other side. Lengthen the waist. Heart moves forward. And then a rotation happens. Thumbs moves towards the heart. Good. Root into the feet. Inhale. Rise up. Reach up. Exhale, full bow. Hands to shin bones or on the mat, halfway lift. And then lunge, left foot back, shin bone down. Anjaneyasana, rise up. Exhale, downward facing dog, tuck and step. Big breath in through the nose. Big breath out the mouth. Feet step together, lift the right leg high. Step through, lunge. Warrior two, open. Good. Anchor down into the knife edges of the feet. You can feel that arch lift. The inner arches draw in and up. Pelvic floor lifts. <sighs> Belly lifts, heart lifts. Arms float out. So we ground into the legs. Give some buoyancy to the upper body. Now pull this front leg straight. Let your right hip crease move back so the pelvis is shoo, spilling. You're going to feel more spaciousness in that under right thigh. And if you notice, ah, that's a bit much today, find a brick and let your right hand come down to a brick. Move the sideways longer. Heart turns up. So especially today, Focus more on finding length through the legs and length through the side bodies, a little bit less about what this top arm is doing. So if you notice you're feeling a little bit crunched, you can just take your hand to your hip and then move open. Good, and then bend into the right knee, inhale all the way up and back, reverse warrior, big side body stretch. Push the front leg straight again, reverse triangle, so the hips are now going to move forward. So the sides of the head glide forward as you reach up and back. And now dig into that front heel, engage your toes back towards the nose. And then if you want, you can take it into what we call sky archer, where you're actually on that heel. You're reaching up. Good. From there, now dial the right toes in, so the left and right toes are parallel. Sweep down over the back shoulder and then drop into a wide angle fold. Head will move low down to the long edge of your mat. Good. And then if you need a little bit of movement side to side, getting deep 
into your hips. Go for it. And hands come underneath the shoulders. Halfway lift your chest and then come over your front right shoulder, right? So then you're going to move the heart forward. We're back into this lunge. Step your back heel down and pull the front leg straight or find blocks. Frame. Come into pyramid pose. Hug the outer right hip back. You even might want to do that little thumb hook. Pull that hip crease back or take your right hand to the sacrum. Feel it flatten. If that's too much today, step the back foot in or take a wider stance. Good. Heart moves forward. Reach the heart forward. Exhale, bow, drop the head. Then soften into the right knee. Spin the back heel up. Step back. Downward facing dog. Step the feet together, left leg goes skyward, reach it up, and step through, lunge. It's going to come open to the warrior two on this side. And on this side, we'll do a little bit for the upper body while we hold the legs. So reach the arms up, take your right hand, pat your upper back, and then sweep your left hand down, and you might just reach fingertip to fingertip, and that's plenty. Draw the front ribs in, so if you notice you're crunching in the low back, draw the front ribs in, and then let the back of the skull press into the upper arm. If your fingertips do clasp, feel free to clasp them, but if that's edgy on the shoulder, be sweet, put a towel here or, here or a strap here. Good, inhale, switch the arms, pat the left hand on the upper back, and then as you exhale, sweep the right arm down, Bend at the elbow, sweep the fingertips up, and maybe you just grab onto clothing. Or the fingers touch, or there's a clasp. And again, if you notice that your low back is compensating and you're sticking your booty out to try and get it, draw those front ribs in, maintain integrity for the spine and then the torso. And just be with yourself. If your fingertips don't touch, that's what's happening today. Not a big deal. Good, and then the inhale, reach the arms up, straighten the front leg, feel that hip crease move back, so the pelvis shoo, spilling like soup over that front thigh, lengthen that bottom waist, and then if the hand needs to come to a brick, it needs to come to a pillow, it needs to come to anything to bring the floor closer to you, you do that, not a big deal. And again, if you're still feeling kind of crunched from all that forward movement, your chest is still really tight and the arm is Creeping up on the ear, you just take the top hand to the hip. Focus on really long legs, focus on long waist. And let your shoulders and your neck be a little easier right now. Good, a couple more breaths. Soften to the front knee, inhale to a reverse warrior, reach up and back, and then press into your front leg. Feel the hips, sides of the hips glide forward, reach up, up and away, and then start to draw up on that quad, so kneecap lifts, dig into the front heel, sky archer, toes come off the ground as they flex to the knee, and then spin on the heel, parallel the toes, glide over that back shoulder, wide leg fold. So in this wide angle fold, this Prasarta Padasanasana, a little bit of pigeon toe feels pretty good for a lot of us, or parallel toes. If your toes are turning out, take a moment to turn them at least parallel, if not a little bit pigeon toed, <sighs> to keep some integrity for the low back and help you really access the hamstrings here. Two more breaths. Good. Hands under shoulders. Halfway lift the chest. You're going to turn to the front over the left shoulder. You're going to come back into this lunge. Good. Now step the back foot in. Heel comes down and start to pull that outer left hip back. And if that's pretty intense, then put your hands on blocks. Go slow and know that this knee never has to fully straighten. If you need a little encouragement or just to identify that movement a little bit more, you can take your thumb right into your hip crease and kind of encourage or push to ground the head of the femur bone back into the hip socket. Move the chest away from that action to get long in the spine, and then fold back. Good. 
you're still not quite sure, you can always take your left hand to your sacrum and feel it flatten out. Good, now soften into the left knee, dial the right heel up, step back, downward facing dog, neck gets long in between the arms. Good, soften the knee, rock forward, back of the heart lifts, and then pull that through so you're gonna widen your collarbones, back of the skull comes up in line with the upper back, lower, chaturanga dandasana, arms come into the side ribs, and then press into the legs, move the lungs through the frame of the shoulders, lift the heart up, lift the entire front line long from the tops of your feet, through the front of your hips, all the way through your torso, up through the heart, and maybe there's even some length in your torso all the way through the throat. But if opening up the front line of the throat causes you to sag, just keep your head forward. Good, one more breath in, and then from the belly, lift, 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 hips first. Ah, heart and head follow. Downward facing dog. Hmm, good. Now come on to your knees onto your seat and bring the soles of your feet together. Soles of your feet together. Walk the heels in to start. We're gonna walk the heels in a little closer. Let the knees fall. I like to take my peace fingers, lasso up my big toes. Lift the heart through and then fold, fold, fold. Good. Move the chest as if the heart could extend farther forward than the toes and then allow a little bit of oh, juicy melt. Yes, that's nice. My feet have been in sandals all weekend. This is called I need a pedicure pose, I'm noticing. <laughs> but these moments of self-care that we can steal for ourselves, and it's not stealing really, it's, it's what we need. But these moments of self-care, be it getting off an airplane after a weekend of training and traveling, um, being in your office and working hard on a project at, at your desk, these moments that we can find for ourselves are so, so, so important because we come back more productive, with more stamina, um, with more respect for ourselves, truly, where we're honoring ourselves. And that's what we're put on this earth to do, to do our best and to be our best and to leave this place a little bit better than we found it. But that's impossible to do if you're not doing it for yourself, right? So come out of that pose, bring your feet in front of you, take your fingertips behind you. Fingertips either straight towards the hips or a little bit turned out. My shoulders tend to like them a little bit turned out. So what I like to do is direct my thumbs in that same line as the dimple or the SI joint in your low back, right? So if you know uh, in your hips where that little dimple is, I like to direct my thumbs right to that so I can loop the shoulder heads back and it's just a nice reference point for my body that I know. Ah, point the thumbs towards the pelvis so I don't overdo it. Root into the feet and then lift the hips up. Allow the chest to move in towards the chin and then gaze up. Focus here, not only in the push of your feet, but also allow this pose to open up the front of the shoulders as well as you push down, feel the shoulder blades press up into the upper back. Good, full inhale, exhale, swing the hips down. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, lift up. And if you notice that direction of the thumb towards the hips feels wonky, when you come back down, rearrange your hands, give yourself some space. Maybe you need your fingertips a little bit more straightforward. Good. Take an exhale, hips lower. We're gonna take ourselves all the way down onto the mat. And for Shavasana today, your homework is to Swing your legs up on the chair you were sitting in. You can, if you were on an airplane, you can't use an airplane seat, but you can use your couch. And do the opposite of sitting in the chair. Throw your legs at the chair. So taking a variation of legs at the wall, but allowing the knees to be soft. And if you need a little bit of extra help, give yourself a little cushion. I'm gonna use a pillow from my couch. Slide it right on underneath your hips. And spend, you know, five, ten minutes, you know, set the timer, give yourself this time. When we are sitting for a really long time, blood can pool in the legs. It's harder for that blood to recirculate. It's hard for lymph to drain from our body. So sending our legs up above our heart 
is really beneficial. If you know for any reason that having your legs inverted above you um, for a long period of time is not good for your body, then you're totally welcome to just take traditional Shavasana and you're going to feel the calming effects there as well. So anytime you can come into an inversion like this, it's just a time to slow it down, reverse the blood flow a little bit, help your body drain and wash out what it doesn't need anymore, help it recirculate um, to bring healthy oxygenated blood back into the areas of the body that maybe felt depleted. Calmer mind, slower breath. If you have the time, please do. Do the homework. Set your timer five, ten minutes. If you need to go, let your knees come into the chest, roll to your side, slow and steady. Good. Then use your hands to push you up so you can come up to sit up tall again. Let your hands come to rest at the heart center, crowns floating overhead. Thank you so much for joining me in my home, hearing my dogs bark, finding out where I really do practice everywhere. Know that yoga is this amazing gift that you can give yourself, um, whether you're in your office, you're in your home, you're traveling for work, you're staying with relatives, you're on vacation. I know a lot of you um, have asked me specifically for these videos because you're going to be on vacation. So it doesn't matter where you are, yoga is always with you. So thank you for taking the time and, and being with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and know that if you found this all of this valuable, um, share it with a friend and, and make sure that they're in on getting their practice on everywhere that they go. All right, let's take our hands to the heart and lift those thumb knuckles right on up in between the brow center, eyes come to close. Just taking a moment to honor wherever it is and whatever it is that provides you with intuition and wisdom, be it something that you believe comes from deep within you or be it something that you believe there's a greater power, all of it's good. All of it is valid. All of it is worthwhile. <sighs> Until next time, namaste. Mm. Thank you so much. Love ya. Mwah.